what is an arithmetic sequence? Well, basically what a sequence is, it's a list. Okay, so it's a list of values or numbers. And there's two different things going on here that you wanna pay attention to. One is the term number. So you can see I have listed n equals one, n equals two, n equals three. That's the term that you're on. And then there's a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, and so on. And that represents the value of that term. So it's kind of like a, a batting order, like say somebody's batting third, but who is that? Oh, it's uh, Joe, for example, right? So that's the term, but this is the value of the term. Okay, now when we go to find um, a specific term in the sequence, what we can do is we can write two different types of formulas. One is an explicit formula, which will take you right to that term that you want. So if you want the hundredth term, you put in n equals 100, it'll take you right to the hundredth term. And then there's another type of uh, formula that's called a recursive formula where you have to keep repeating uh, to get to the next term, the next term, the next term. So for example, for this one right here, if we were to write a recursive formula, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by saying a sub one, okay, which is our first term, two, and then a sub n, okay, this is the nth term, you're gonna take the a sub n minus one. Okay, so n minus one just means that you're gonna go, if you want this term, you go to the previous term, plus d, okay, and this is when n is greater than or equal to two, meaning the second term, third term, fourth term. Now, what is d? Well, d is called the common difference, okay? And when you're going from two to five, five to eight, eight to 11, by taking this number and subtracting the number before it, you get that common difference. So 11 minus eight is three, 14 minus 11 is three. So you can see we're consistently adding three each time to get to the next term. That's what makes this an arithmetic sequence. If you were multiplying, then that's a geometric sequence. We'll talk about that in another video. So in this video, what we're talking about is adding. In this particular example, we're adding three. So what I'm gonna do is, instead of having D here, I'm gonna replace that with the common difference of three. And the way this works is, say we wanna find out the one, two, three, four, five, five, sixth term, okay? So what you would do, so here's n equals six. If we wanna find a sub six, we go to the a sub six minus one, okay, which is gonna be the fifth term, which is the one before it, and we're gonna add three, and that's gonna take us to 17. Now, if we wanted to find the hundredth term, we'd have to keep going to the previous term, adding three, then going to the previous term, adding three. That would take a long time for us. For a computer, it would be really quick, but what's gonna work a little bit better here is if we write an explicit formula, and that's what this one here shows us. So a sub one is the first term. So in this case, that's two. And then we're adding three each time, that's d, the common difference, n minus one times. Okay, now why n minus one? Well, if you wanna find the seventh term, and you're already at the first term, you have to add three once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times. So even though it's the seventh term, we're only adding three six times to two. So that's why it's n minus one. It just takes one less addition of the common difference to get to the term that you want. So if we can simplify this down a little bit further. This is gonna be two plus three n minus three, which equals three n minus one. So there we go. Now, if we wanna find the hundredth term, all we have to do is put in 100 for n. That's 300 minus one is 299. Or if you want the 10th term, that's 30 minus one, which is 29. Okay, so this is working with arithmetic sequences. Okay, I wanna show you another example, a little bit more challenging example, and that's this one over here. A sub three equals five. A sub six equals 26. How do you find A sub 10, which is the 10th term? Well, before we get into that, I wanna show you with these ones right here. If we were to graph these, okay, I make a little grid here. When n equals one, see how the value of the term is two? So I'm just gonna plot that right there. When n equals two, the uh, output or the value of the term is five. Okay, if n is three, we're up here at eight. Okay, and what you can notice is that this is forming a straight line, it's linear. And when you look at this equation here, you can tell by looking at it, okay, three is really like our slope. We're going up three over one, up three over one. That's the common difference, is really the slope. And then the y-intercept, negative one, 
okay, is where it's crossing the uh, y-axis here. Okay, so you can see the parallels between arithmetic sequences and linear equations. So let's go over to this one now, and what we're gonna do is instead of thinking this as uh, two points in our sequence, we're gonna write these as coordinates. We're gonna say three comma five and six comma 26, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the slope. So 26 minus five, which is 21, six minus three, which is three, and so you can see we have a slope of seven. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go y equals seven x plus b, so I'm just treating this like two points, finding the equation of a line, and to find that b value, we're just gonna put in one of these points. So when x is three, y is five. Three is the input, five is the output. So five equals seven times three plus b, so five equals 21 plus b, subtract the 21, and b equals negative 16. We're gonna put that back in for b, and we've got y equals 7x minus 16. Now instead of writing it like the equation of a line, I'm gonna write it using the sequence notation a sub n equals 7n minus 16. So you can see if we put three in, seven times three is 21, minus 16 gives us back the value of that uh, third term, which is five. But if we wanna find the 10th term now, we put in 10, that's 70 minus 16, which is 54. So this is gonna be 54. So this is uh, one way to work with it. Just work with it as two data points. Think of the equation of a line. There's another way to do it too, and that's where you can actually write a system of equations. So we're gonna use this explicit formula here, okay, and we're gonna write two equations using a sub n and n, and then we can solve for a1 and d. I'll show you what I mean. So let me erase this to give us a little more space. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say a sub n equals a sub one plus d times n minus one, and when this value is five, three minus one, since this is the third term, this will be two. And then for this one, 26, we don't know the first term, but six minus one is five. And so now what you can see is we have a system of equations and we can solve for A1 and D by subtracting or doing the substitution method. Then we can go ahead and put those back in and we'll have an explicit formula to find any term. So this is how you work with arithmetic sequences. Go ahead and check out some of my other videos about arithmetic series, how to find the sum of a sequence of numbers, it's called a series, and uh, the geometric ones where you're multiplying to get to the next term. If you're enjoying these videos, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the other videos.